first speaker is the acting executive director for the Calgary International Film Festival and a veteran creator of movie magic for more than a quarter of a century. Please welcome Catherine Penhale. Hi. My name is Catherine Penhill, and I'm the Acting Executive Director at the Calgary International Film Festival. I would love to have picked a better picture of me, but as it turns out, I have a history of being camera shy. Um, that is me, actually standing right over there, so it's all, you're going to have to take my word for it. I know we're here to talk about closure as a theme, but for SIF and for me personally, closure, the closure of Eau Claire and closure itself, they're inseparable concepts. As you can imagine, SIF is at an inflection point right now. We're the largest film festival in Alberta, about to celebrate our 25th anniversary this September, and this mall has been a hub of our operations for close to 15 years, acting as a hub of activity. In addition, in December of 2023, Steve Schrader, my predecessor and SIF's executive director for close to 11 years, had his last day in the hot seat and gave it to me to hold on to just until after this year's festival when we can find a new permanent ED. That's a lot of change really, really fast, and it's a lot of big stories coming to an end. I don't think it's hyperbolic to call it the end of an era. While this isn't the first time SIF has lost a venue, it is the first time we've lost a venue that so fundamentally affects how we operate in the city and how we collaborate with our community. What might not be so obvious initially is why the closure of Eau Claire is so important to me personally. <laughs> Standing right there, uh, so, pers so important to me personally, uh, in my career and it's tied up in who I am. I hope you'll indulge me a bit as I tell you a little bit about how I got started at SIF and how this space has shaped my career and how I'm trying to find closure now that this space is going away. One fateful day in 2016, I was having a very relaxing bubble bath when I got a call out of the blue one day asking if I wanted to be a venue coordinator for the Calgary International Film Festival. They needed someone to cover the final weekend here at Eau Claire uh, as someone was stepping away for a family wedding, and I said, hell yeah, for sure. Wasn't until uh, I'd hung up that I thought to wonder how the hell someone got my phone number, because I never applied for a job to work at the film festival. <laughs> Not once. In the end, I did get that job, and I worked my first SIF photo. I was running Eau Claire for the final weekend, a weekend historically full of sold-out shows with about six hours of training, completely alone. I was 20 during my first film festival, to say I was green and unsure and, frankly, out of my depth would be a kind description. But I was hooked. Working on the ground that way meant I got to see a different side of SIF than most people have, and I got to see a different side of Eau Claire Market than most people ever will, for better or worse. I got to be side stage during Q&As, running mics for my friends as I watched them uh, show their films on the big screen for their first time, surrounded by friends and family. I've watched movies through projection booth glass, opening up the windows and listening to hundreds of people laugh together or cry together when the speakers broke, which they did a lot. Uh, I set up a secret office, the location of which I withheld for years. Fun fact, it is not a secret anymore because it's being torn down. It is just over there. It is also the same office that I hid in right after Steve told me during the middle of last year's festival that he was stepping down and asked me if he wanted me, if he wanted, uh, me to recommend that I get, I get the job as acting executive director. I'm telling you all of this to illustrate that this place has been the location of some of my most influential memories, good and bad, personal and professional. And closing the chapter on a place that served as a backdrop for that is, it's hard. But the backdrop isn't the story. It's the people who I experienced with that created just how special this space is for me. The volunteers, who frankly could do my job, the other staff, many of whom I still have the honor of working with today, and more than anything, the thousands of people who came to together to hear stories be told and to tell their own. I've seen immense joy and shared immense sadness with filmmakers and audiences alike, and it never ceases to amaze me how film brings people together. Ultimately, I have to believe that SIF audiences will follow these stories. So long as we hold up our end of the bargain, keep doing amazing programming, create a space that welcomes everyone, we'll see the audience adapt to this new dream, a new vision of what SIF can be. And over time, this venue will become just another place for the archives, another venue that I tell new staff about and say, do you remember when? And they say, no. <laughs> but for me, it's also saying a little bit of a goodbye to the version of myself I was when I first stepped into this space. I was young and naive, and to be totally upfront, a little bit dumb. 
And that's okay. It's hard not to envy the version of myself that had far fewer responsibilities and whose primary focus was being the fastest scanner this festival has ever seen, which I was, and my staff will vouch for me, and I still am, but that's not what I'm doing anymore. Now I get to explore a whole new realm of possibilities and understand what it means to steward an organization with a history almost as long as I am old. That is a big responsibility, but it's, it's exciting. Something we do after every festival is a postmortem. We sit down and we talk about all the things that went wrong, all the things that went poorly, and all the things that went well. And when we're doing it right, we talk about the ways we stepped in and showed up for each other. We express gratitude, we take accountability, and we have some hard conversations. It's a ritual, that postmortem. The whole festival really is. So much of it is muscle memory and habit and routine and the coming together and the learning. And then at the end of it, we all get to wash our hands and say, we get to put this one behind us. We close the door and we look, at, we look ahead. Another festival's always coming down the pipe. So if I was to do a postmortem on Eau Claire and my time here, it would go something like this. What didn't go well? I once fell flat on my face going up the escalator in front of hundreds of people. I blame the escalator. <laughs> Patience is a virtue, and it's one I wasn't naturally graced with. I'm still working on that. I apologize to my staff and the audience. That time the whole front lobby flooded was also not a good day. What would I do differently? I would take more pictures, as you can tell. <laughs> I, uh, my first day, I wore uncomfortable but super cute shoes. Mistake. I don't think I need to explain why. I would dream bigger earlier, because it's kind of the best part of the job. And what went well? I made some of my best friends at SIF. From volunteers to staff to venue managers, shout out to Steve Cox, the venue manager here at Cineplex Eau Claire. They taught me teamwork, and they're still trying to teach me how to cut loose a little. This space also let us share stories from across Canada and the world with over 100,000 people, and it's pretty good in my books. And finally, through a series of happenstance and luck and some guy having my phone number, it put me where I am today, and I'm so grateful.